my gosh. Welcome to episode 15 already. Can you believe it? It's your favorite podcast, but did you die with the Jet Sisters? That's Angie. I'm Rachel. There's a dog in my lap, so there will be barking. Welcome. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you. Well, we can't see you, but it's so nice to know you're there in the world. I feel like an old timey radio host. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Delilah. Delilah. <laughs> I'm right. sorry, Delilah. You're not an old-timey radio host. Just a radio host. She's not. She's also probably not listening. Anyway, moving on. We have a lot to talk about today, so. We we do. We're It's going to be a, a quick, you listen fast because we got a lot to say. We have been busy. We have been on the go. Since last we spoke, I told you I was going to Spain and that was a lie. <laughs> but let's back up. We went to the eclipse in Dallas and it was awesome. Breathtaking lived up to my memories of the last one and was well worth the stupid amount of money we paid to go see something that was happening for four minutes, but it was, it was worth it. And 10, 10 would do it again. 10 out of 10 might fly to like Egypt or something to see the next one, you know, it's somewhere far flung. Like, why not? Sounds fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip, go to the eclipse where your friend lives and just stay with them. Thanks, Nick and Jess. That saved us <laughs> so much money because hotels were outrageous. Like it, yeah. Outrageous. It sure did. And then you had, you flew, you flew to Utah right after to speak at Wits. So I did. And have you even been home? <laughs> Barely. I feel like I haven't, but the moments I have been home, I've been at my desk, like doing interviews, book promotion, catching up on um, AAA podcasts and so many things. Yeah. It's been very busy and I leave again pretty soon, but we'll talk about that later. That's crazy. Wits what was, what did you speak on at, at wits? So Remind me. Um, I was on a panel of women authors who have written travel memoirs. Um, and we were kind of talking about how every path is different. Every author's path is different. There's no one right way to do it. You can self-publish, you can do traditional Mm -hmm. publishing like I did. There's a million ways. Um, and, and it was great. There were a lot of people, there's probably a hundred people in the audience and think that's like a hundred women who want to write books. And the more of us that do, the more opportunity there is to, to do it. So it's not, the whole idea is kind of like eat, pray, love was the gold standard. And that's, Nobody would publish a woman's travel memoir because that's all there was. There were already was one. And, yeah. and now we're getting to do it. So very exciting. Had a good time. There was snow, which, you know, is my whole thing. We went to the Natural History Museum for the the big like welcome party. Dude, dinosaur bones. So many of them and many, many rock specimens. So highly recommend. That's very that's was very exciting for yeah. you. I know. I have so many pictures on my phone of the rock, the rock displays. I was sending him to Rick. I'm, He's like, "Aren't you at I a know party?" You. <laughs> like, I am at a party, <laughs> but there's rocks in this hallway, and I need you to see them. So very, very fun right. trip to Utah. I really enjoyed myself. So what happened with Spain? Because, like you said, when last we talked, you were canceling Utah because the flights were too expensive, and then heading to Spain because you would get to fly standby. And then what happened? Yeah. So the whole plan, and we never, we never even talked about this because everything happened so quickly. So Jesse, who we went to Dallas and stayed with like at her house, um, it was her 30th birthday. So she said, Hey, come to Spain, fly standby, sleep on our couch on the Airbnbs, like easy. And of course I said, yes. So that was the plan was to go to Dallas then go to Spain, then come home. So Before we left to go to Texas, Ben and I were looking at houses to buy, like we have been for the past three years. Um, We found one we really liked. We put in an offer. And as we flew to to Dallas and I landed, Ben calls me and is like, hey, they accepted our offer. So I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, we're buying a house. I'm in Dallas for a week. Then I'm in Spain for a week. We're closing in 30 days. Is this okay? Okay couple days go by and I'm like, do you need me to come home? You seem stressed. And he's like, yes, thank you. Please. Can you not go to Spain? So that was, that was, that was sad, but you know, buying a house, big deal. Jesse is mad at Ben forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We owe Jesse a birthday trip. Yes. Which works for me. Um, so very exciting. Flew home on a Friday. Our inspection was a Saturday. I had moved in, in my mind. 
um, reached out to our, our, the house we're currently renting and told him, you know, it's looking like we're moving out early, whatever. We do the inspection. I was, we do I was the there inspection. virtually as you recall. Yeah. You, yeah. And a leak springs up out of the bathroom. Long story short, this is a very long story yeah. with many, like many parts. I could do 30 minutes on this. Long story short, uh, every, the whole, the house, they lied. They lied about everything. Everything was broken. Very sad. Um, so we did not end up buying that house. The Lord protected us from that house, but then I didn't get to go to Spain. So now I'm here, which is everything is fine. This is great. But that was, it's been a week. Yeah. It's yeah. That's, that's very disappointing. I know you guys were excited about that house, but if God's going to show up with a spring of living water in the middle of the bathroom and be like, not this one, then you got to go with that. Right. And it, we had just started the inspection, like inspections take, you know, three, four hours. We were 40 minutes in <laughs> and our inspector was like, we need, we're, we're done. We're and he didn't even charge us. It was amazing. He, he was like, don't worry about it. We're like, thank you. So that's crazy. That's how you want it to go. Honestly. Yes. There's yes. disappointment, but at least you didn't get any further down the road. So yeah. Good job, Ray. Good job, Ben. And good job, inspector. And thanks God for, <laughs> for the flood. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. for watching out. Good for looking us. out, Lord. Yeah. All right. So more, more on, more on the housing market um, later, but I, uh, you talked about this a little while ago. What was the Google search for the eclipse? So the day of the eclipse, um, if you look at the search results per Google, it, it increased exponentially the, the search term, my eyes hurt all along the path of the eclipse. Like it, it got really crazy. And so I don't know what to tell folks, but you weren't supposed to look at the sun. And I really feel like that message has been driven home, but I don't think people listen. I don't think people have critical comprehension skills anymore. I just, I don't know. I'll be, I'll be honest. My eyes hurt a little bit afterwards, but I think it was just in my head because I wasn't staring at the sun. You're looking up for three hours. Oh my gosh. Yeah, are, oh. And it was incredible. Was it not? It was, it was really cool. 10 out of 10 would do it again. And we have the opportunity to, because it is coming to Florida. Plan it on your calendars, people. <laughs> In how many years? 21. <laughs> um, yes. The day after our brother's 60th birthday, Rachel will be having a huge bash because I think it's going to be more in your neck of the woods. It's it's not coming to Jacksonville. It's it's totality is like Orlando. So everybody put it on your calendar, plan to live that long, you know, be there or be square. And cause we're really going to do it up big August 12th, 2045. No, no. It's crazy that they know that so far away. Science man. Anyway. Um, Hey, real quick, let's give a what we're doing soon update. <laughs> we did book our flights to Sweden. Ah, finally. finally. We we are officially going to Sweden. Taylor Swift concert. We've got like four or five days there, which I think is too long. I don't think. I'm looking at like things to do in Stockholm and it's the ABBA Museum. Woo! It's the Shipwreck Museum. Woo! It's a different, it's another type of museum. Woo! So if you've got recommendations, like send them our way because I'm struggling a bit. Look, I think we're going to, first of all, we have so many friends who are going to be there also for the concert. So we're going to be having dinners and hangouts with friends. I also got a press release from Visit Sweden the other day. That's like, here are all the, the Swifty things to do in Sweden. And it's like themed brunches and after parties and dance parties and karaoke. I'm like, this is my dream life. So this is going to be so much fun. And, um... Yeah, I've never been to Sweden. You've never been to Sweden. So we get to see a whole new place. I'm thinking about taking a couple day trips because there's like islands and probably fjords. And I don't know. I don't know what they have over there. Whales, something cool. We'll find out. And I'm really excited and about the Opera Whales Museum. in England. Not that whales. <laughs> like, ooh, whales. That, that was um, my impression of spa music. <laughs> 
That's great. Yeah. Oh my God. So yeah, we're, we're headed to Sweden. That's going to be super, super fun and exciting. Um, and new. I haven't been anywhere. Like I haven't been to Europe. I don't think since the last, maybe when we went to Italy, maybe. Eh, yeah. It, that could have been the last time I went to Europe and that was ages ago. That was like two years ago. <laughs> that was like six years ago. COVID, Maybe three. COVID exploded the time space continuum, but I haven't, I definitely haven't been to Europe since COVID. Were, did we come before COVID? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was not engaged and that was crazy, crazy. It's been a long time. So, and it's been a long time since I've been to a totally new place, like completely new country. So I'm very excited. Well, speaking of new places and traveling and things, mm. let's head over to your next favorite segment, doo -doo 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 -doo, the travel news of the week. Yes. Oh, this is super exciting. Um, there's a high-speed train finally coming to the U.S. And guess where it goes? Well, you already know. Your mom's house to... <laughs> Wouldn't that be convenient if it was just high-speed train? L listen, I, I hope at some point they'll have a Jacksonville to Orlando high speed situation because I would be, I would be on that once a week easily. And, and if it, you know, cut it, cut the time in half, I'd be to your house in an hour. Hello. That would be amazing. And I get to avoid I-4, but no, that is not where it's going. It's going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. So in no way does that affect me, but it is exciting that it's happening and it's supposed to be, I think they just broke ground this week. It's very exciting it's actually nice. happening it's not just an idea in somebody's head like everything in jacksonville you know we we might do this we might do this i'm i'm getting old and nothing's ha getting done so i'm very happy to see that this is this is going to be and it cuts the the trip down from a four-hour drive without traffic to just two hours so oh, that's great boom 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 yeah I yay, yay for y'all we'll just be over here still driving on i4 Right? Like, when are we going to get, when are we going to get the train all around Florida? That would be such a game changer. Somebody needs to get on that before I'm too old to care, you know? And so this, know. anyway, this train is being built by Brightline West, which Floridians wow. will know the Brightline is our train that is now going from, what, is it like the Orlando airport to Miami? Yes, but it stops in other spots too. I haven't taken it yet. I want to. Yeah. Uh, just haven't. We haven't been down to Miami. We definitely need to make a trip because that, the convenience, the convenience, like, ugh, that's what Europe has. Well, that's one thing Europe has mm -hmm. that we don't have is trains and, and ease of getting around. Also healthcare. <laughs> Wish I could yeah. get some of that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And that is your travel news of the week. Very good. Very good. Um, well, I don't think our topic will surprise anyone because we've kind of been talking about it for a while. We went and saw the eclipse in what city, Ange? Dallas. So today is all about Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, maybe a little bit of Denton, which is where we stayed. Um, but let's let's let me let me ask you this, Ange, before we really dive in. Let me ask you this. And for our um, our our non-American listeners. Texas is big. It's real big. Ange, how far do you think it would take you to drive from one side of Texas to the farthest side of Texas? Um, let's say 12 hours. Because it it's pretty big. That might you're 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 saying this way to this way, but it's tall and long. So Yeah, it's huge. It's a big, big state. Um, but I'm thinking you say, you say 12 yeah, hours? Where you enter at Louisiana and Texas and where you exit at New Mexico and Texas, I'd say 12 hours to get through. You're not even close. Okay. Well, I mean, you're, you're kind of close. <laughs> it's 16 hours, 16 hours, That's two long days of driving. If you're just doing That's, like eight um, hours that, a day, two days to get out of Texas. If you're from the, wherever, yeah. um, that's insane. Now, if you're in Europe and you drove 16 hours, I feel like you could visit many countries yeah we should and, and we should look that up and see which countries you could visit in a 16 hour drive that would be oh my gosh you could have croissants in france in the morning and tell you what i'm gonna google that because that sounds fun rough. you start talking about you start talking about our topic okay so what i wanted to talk about today is the fort worth stockyards because we went there the day before the eclipse 
uh, to check out. They have, oh, they have so many things, but so the stockyards are this historic, like living piece of history. And it takes you back to the days of the wild west. Am I right? Ray Ray, uh, the stockyards were established in 1866. So this is, this is a, like a slice of, of Texan history, but it's still working. And it's from way back, I guess, Fort Worth used to be called Cowtown. Did you know that? You're not listening. Fort Worth used to be called Cowtown. And it's because of, it was like the, the seat of the cattle industry way back in the day. Here's a fun fact. Did you know mm. that Jacksonville, Jacksonville's original name, Jacksonville, Florida, was Cowford because it's where the cows forded the river. That sounds familiar. I feel like I learned that once maybe in fourth grade. Yeah. So like we're from Cowford and Jesse's from Cowtown. What? Amazing. What? Yeah. Okay. I have an update on this Europe map. Okay. It's Bill. Nine and a half hours. You can go from Berlin to Budapest. Wow. So just saying. It's incredible. Yeah. Meanwhile, Proceed. you're just like, do they have Bucky's? In in yeah, they have Bucky's. I'm like, meanwhile, you could just see like 27 Bucky's <laughs> driving through Texas. So we went the day before the eclipse because twice a day, I think it's at 10, no, 1130 and four o'clock. They walk these Texas Longhorn cattle through the streets and, and the horns are incredible i long this, this is a critter you would not want chasing you <laughs> because you could just imagine getting launched and in fact they do have rodeos um on site there's a like a coliseum there and um there gosh there's line dancing there's a historic train there's the most incredible taxidermy museum slash store that i've ever seen I mean, I don't know if I've which is something I I never thought I would care about taxidermy, but the how they have it is so weird and cute and fun, and I and I hesitate to say cute, but it's cute. So yes, um, so we're looking at like the big animals, right? I Jesse and Nick have this gorgeous house that has all this character, and I think they need. <laughs> This is so stupid. Like a giant buffalo head or something. Like that's how big and beautiful the wall is. And like, I could just see something really powerful there. Whatever. <laughs> so we get to the stockyards and there's this taxidermy museum with literally any kind of animal. It sounds kind of gory, but like carcass, stuffed carcass. Isn't that what taxidermy basically yeah. is? So anyways, big animals everywhere. Buffalo bison sorry not sorry um but they also have all these raccoons like little ta and squirrels but little taxidermied raccoons and they have them set up like around a table and they're playing cards and like drinking there is a mouse a taxidermied mouse that's about this big wearing like a sparkling bikini and on a stripper pole what <laughs> Yeah, so very cute. And you can, I think you can easily spend an entire day at the stockyards. Uh, you didn't mention the petting zoo. It was like $5 to get in. They had alpacas and super cute goats. Very aggressive, but. Oh, I wouldn't call that. Was, that was tough. I didn't think they were. I would. Had, they were climbing on the fences, like, give me your pellets. Yeah, so you have food and you walk around and feed them. But the alpaca was particularly cute. Um, there were more children just absolutely shrieking at, that I think have never seen an animal before and they were fully losing it. So the, the animals were perfectly well behaved if you ask me. Um, but yeah, the highlight I think of, of the stockyards and what people mostly go for is, is the cattle, cattle wandering through the deal. Right. I think, I, I think so. Yeah. And, well, I, and maybe even eat, probably eating and drinking too. Um, I think Jesse had mentioned she goes there often and they don't even watch the cattle. I mean, they're from Texas, so they've seen yeah, it, so but they do many other things in that, in that area. So if you're going to the stockyards, you've got, you've got food, you've got drink, you've got things to do, lots of photo opportunities. It's really a must be if you're in that area for any length of time, you wouldn't want to miss it. And I will mm -hmm. recommend 
I think we probably went on the busiest day that the stockyards have probably ever seen, or at least one of, because there were so many people in town for the eclipse from all over the world. In fact, when they were gathering everybody and getting ready for the cows to, to do their walk, they were like, okay, who's from Texas? And all the people cheered. And then, you know, who's from Florida and who's from here and there. And then they were like, who's from another country? And so many people cheered. And that's, indicative of how many people came for the eclipse just to to be there. And I think a lot of people went to Texas because the idea was they were the least likely to have clouds or bad weather as you kind mm-hmm. of went up up the path and and guess what? The clouds cleared in the morning and we it really was perfect. So, but yeah, back back to Fort Worth. Go see the stockyards. It's really cute and Jesse tried to get us tickets to the rodeo, but they were sold out. I have never been to a rodeo and you would think as many times as I've gone to Texas, I would have, yeah. but, um, really what I end up doing when I go to Texas is at, hang out in, house. is sitting at, at Jesse's in Denton, but Denton is such a cute, Denton is cute, like small college town. It has everything I want. It's, cool. uh, it's, it's great. So, I mean, I have been to Texas 20, 30 times. And I have been to Fort Worth once and I have been to Dallas once. Like that is, uh-huh. That I'm not even kidding. Went to the stockyards. That was the first time I've been to the stockyards. In 30 visits to the Dallas Fort Worth yeah. Metroplex. Ray, Ray. Yeah, I know. And there's so many things like botanical gardens. Yes. Uh, the Fort Worth Zoo. I may have, mm, have I been to the zoo? I don't know. Um, but we have eaten a lot of good food in Texas. That's one thing you have to do every day, whether you're sitting at Jesse's house or not, you still got to eat. So yes, we did eat a lot of good food and, and now I'm (laughs) eating salad this week. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was, it was delightful. We, we had a lot of barbecue and a lot of Tex-Mex and a lot of queso. We had some incredible burgers at, um, what's that place in Denton, LSA. LSA on Denton's little adorable town square. Like you put me in a small town with a little square and some early 1900s brick buildings. And I am, I am having my hallmark dreams in my, in my mind where I'm like, I could buy this town. I could be the mayor of this town. I I want to start a bookstore and a karaoke place and a coffee shop and just everybody can have an idyllic life. And then I'm like, Oh no, that doesn't, that's not how that usually works. Also, I don't have any money, so I'm probably not going to buy a town, but it's it's that kind of town. It's hallmarky and cute, and I love it. Um, it's also, and please fact check me on this because I've heard this from Jesse, and this could be a lie. The flat Earth capital of the world. <laughs> like, there's more flat earthers there than but how anywhere could we else. Possibly measure such a thing. There's not the statistics of where the flat earthers live. Let me let me find let me ask the internet. Okay, ask definitely ask the internet. Um, and while I ask the internet, do you want to, um, tell everyone a travel tip about Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas? Sure. Um, yes. So when you go to the stockyards, this is my travel tip. And cause this is what we did. We walked around the stockyards. We saw the shops and we saw some of the bars and restaurants. We saw the, um, that historic train that literally comes right through the middle of everybody walking. I didn't even know there were train tracks that I was standing on until there was a train coming. Mind you, it comes very slowly. It's not like popping in and knocking people left and right. But so there's a hotel that is kind of on one end of this stockyards area. It's called hotel Drover. And we went there to get a drink and, you know, decide what we were going to do next. And it was so cute. Like, leather interiors and reclaimed wood and like beautifully designed. So it's, I don't know what you would think like a modern cowboy would, would be like, you know what I mean? Am I describing yeah. it right? Like it's fancy, but yeah, it's, it's rustic. Yeah. And it's on a stream and there's plenty of places to sit and get a drink. Um, just adorable and feels a little bit hidden. Um, we spent many hours there relaxing. So that is, that is the travel tip. Yeah. Go to hotel, if you're driver, at the stock, grab a drink, yeah. grab a food. Yeah. The little garden out back is stunning. So one thing we haven't talked about yet, Ray, is what our disaster was of the trip. The, uh, yeah, there was a disaster. Totally uh, never expected Tragic. this. Texas, 
Texas ran out of barbecue. There were so many people in town for the eclipse. So the day before the eclipse, we had to go to, I think it was three separate restaurants because there was, there was no food. So we kept going from one place to another. You know, we started at the best Texas restaurant, the recommendations we got and just got a little bit worse and worse and worse. I mean, it was still great, but that yeah. was, that was a little bit mind blowing to me. We got in line for the one place that Jesse really had been dying to take us. And this was not late in the day. This was like five thirty or six. It was not mm -hmm. 9 PM. And we get in the line and everything is scratched out on the menu, except like sausage. <laughs> and we we're like, we're not standing in line for that. That's not what we wanted. And so we drove to another close by place and they were also out and people were just standing around. Everyone's befuddled. Like, what are we going to eat? There's no barbecue in Texas. It is the end of the world. Oh no. So the apocalypse yeah. almost happened. All right. What are we doing this week? What are we doing this week? We are... <sighs> I'm leaving for more book tour um, in a couple of days. So I will be in Franklin, Tennessee. I will be in Woodstock, Georgia. And I will be in Fayetteville, Georgia at some super cute independent bookstores having book signing events and meeting people and signing books. And I, I say signing books because it's still so weird to me that anybody except like a bank loan manager would want my signature. So yay. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Uh, super have cool. fun. I wish I could go, but I'll be busy possibly buying another house. We found another one. So I'll keep everyone updated on that. Um, I'm also going to Boston next week to work I'm directing an episode. So directing an I'll episode of what? Tell us fancy lady. What are you directing? The college tour. I'm so proud of you. My sister, the director. Show I work on. Yeah. That's very exciting. And you have not been to Boston. I've never been to Boston. Oh. It's a beautiful time to go to Boston. You're going to love it. I've been there one time when I was like five years old. So really there's no, there's no time to explore. So can't talk about Boston when I get back. Sorry. No, maybe factor. Well, you don't have time for another day. Never mind. Forget it. Boston, you'll no time. inside of your hotel room and the school. So no time. yeah. Um, and then you're going to Auburn for your brother-in-law's graduation. Yep. Then we go to Auburn. Then we're back for a week and then we go to Sweden. So if you need anything from us, don't. I can't do it. Don't. All right. Unhinge sign off. Dang it. I really wanted to find a better one. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, everyone. Smash that subscribe button and may the odds be ever in your favor. That's terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible. Our whole thing is about, but did you die, man? So don't. Out there in the Hunger Games where we live. <laughs> Okay, here's mine. Keep wandering and remember, never trust a skinny chef. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Oh. See you next week. Okay, we love you. Goodbye. <laughs>